sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything and I will adore you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a privilege to sing a love song to Jesus. Wow. That is awesome, isn't it? Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Let's remember to have confidence. Scripture even says that we can come boldly into the throne of grace in our time of need. And so if there's needs tonight, of course, we want you to feel free and confident in acknowledging those things and give them to the Lord. You know, one of the greatest needs that we have on a regular basis is to be able to cast our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. And so tonight we're going to take a, an opportunity to do that. Let's remember Austin. I talked to him for a little bit back there. and. The funeral for his mother is going to be on Friday, so I know this is a very, very hard time for that family, but we know that God is able, isn't he? And so if you could mention that family in prayer tonight, that would be good. If you have needs, I've, again, like I said, have confidence in the Lord. Let's do that. Why don't we just close our eyes, lift both of our hands up right now, and just enter into a little bit of a closet right now and just say, God, we're coming to you, Lord God, knowing that you are able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. That's what's so beautiful about this thing, Lord, that we can come to you and we can understand that your word, your truth, everything about you, Lord God, exceeds anything we could ever even think about. And so, Lord God, touch every family here tonight, the ones that are faithful in coming to services, those who could not make it here tonight, we ask that you would touch them, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, for Sister Wanda's dad, I pray for all of these that are sick, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch them, heal their bodies, Lord. We know that by your stripes we are healed in Jesus' name. Yes, 
We call upon your name, Lord God, because there's none other name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We exercise that right now, Lord God. We have faith in what the Lord does. Oh, yes, Jesus. Strengthen us tonight, Lord God. Let this word tonight be a, a, a just a strengthening for us in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, hallelujah, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, we pray for the leadership of this city and for this county and for this state in Jesus' name and for this world, Lord God, that you would help these people, Lord Jesus. Help them to hear from you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Touch our president, Lord God, the Congress, the Senate, Lord God, everyone that's in power, Lord God. I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord God, the leadership of our city, the leadership, Lord God, of our county, in the name of Jesus. Touch them, Lord God. Yes, yes, Lord God. Let your favor fall upon us. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it, Lord God. I praise you for this. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord God. What a, tr what a tremendous privilege, Lord God, to know you, to know your word, to know your ways, Lord God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't we just lift up the word, lift up the name of Jesus and praise now. Come on, let's praise him together. Oh, ye people. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, he is so worthy. Worthy of all praise. Worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Why don't you shake two or three hands before you're seated and say, hey, good night to be in Bible study. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, good night to be in Bible study. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, we're going to, um, just for just a few minutes here tonight, we're going to go ahead and review lesson number eight. Um, I won't uh, spend a lot of time, but um, lesson eight is a very, very, very important lesson. We uh, understand that it talks about um, the plan of salvation in, in a lot of detail here. And so it's a good, um, a good Bible study, or I should say a good chapter to, um, to lead people to Jesus' name. Praise God. And so thankful for that. And that's what we've been doing. Lesson number eight. Um, talked about the Great Commission. We talked about grace. Talked about repentance, if you'll remember that, in um, chart number three. And then we talked about water baptism, the importance of that, of course, and the idea of um, circumcision that happens to the heart, which is very, very important. Heart's got to become pliable for the Word of God to to be there, and then we talked about the covenant name, of course, Jesus, and um, hopefully this has been a blessing to you that you will know that, and then, um, you know, the theme of this lesson is don't just stop with repentance, don't just stop with water baptism, but allow the Holy Ghost to come into your life. Can somebody say amen? Talked a little bit last week about the purpose of the Holy Ghost, what is it, what's it doing, what are, what are, what are we, what can we expect, praise God, from the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and there's a lot there. There's no question about it. We talked about the evidence of speaking in other tongues, which the Bible speaks about. Um, these signs shall follow them that believe is what the Bible teaches us in Mark chapter 16. We go into the book of Acts, and we there's several places in the book of Acts that it's recorded when they received the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, one thing I will say is that in the ninth chapter where we do know that Paul the Apostle Paul received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There wasn't a place there that said that he spoke in other tongues. And I had somebody bring that up to me one time, 
And I said, well, I said, that's true. I said, you must understand that the Bible is not an exhaustive study. It doesn't go into every minute detail. All it does is give us examples and principles and patterns. Amen. And so we can trace that in the book of Acts. You can tell that each group that received the baptism of the Holy Ghost did, in fact, speak in other tongues. Well, the point with Paul is if you go to the 14th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, he mentions the fact that he speaks in tongues more than any of them. And so, again, you know, sometimes you just have to search the Scripture to find, um, you know, where the reference is at. But we do know that that, that principle is intact. Can you say praise the Lord? Yes. And then, of course, in chart number nine, we, you can absolutely take somebody and you can begin to lead them into the idea of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Um, I think that is very, very uh, a good thing. I think it's that we become comfortable with helping people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I think we have to be careful that we don't um, overstep our boundaries. Let's put it that way. And I'm not here to be critical. I'm just here to say that sometimes we can get very zealous working at a Pentecostal altar, and sometimes we can become a distraction for people, and we have to be careful with that. I've found that from my own experience, um, one of the things that the Lord calls me to do when I'm praying with people for the baptism of the Holy Ghost is encourage them. Encourage them. Encourage them to pray. Encourage them to ask the Lord to forgive them. And then after you, they've asked them to forgive them, I said, hey, why don't we just praise the Lord for what he just did? I mean, this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about manipulating their minds and, and making them do things that they don't want to do. I'm just talking about the art of encouraging, encouraging people to lift up and praise the Lord. Because we understand there's only one that baptizes in the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say amen? John the Baptist stipulated this. When he told the group there, he said, you know, I baptize with water, but there's one. One coming after me. And, of course, we understand that to be Jesus, and his ministry is what opened up the door for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So we understand it's God that is the one that gives the gift. And so we need to keep that in mind in Jesus' name. Now, tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to go into lesson number nine, and we have a guest tonight. I've, I've, I have um, opened this up for whoever wants to come and, and, and take a, um, a, a um, one chart and, and wants to try to and, and go ahead and teach that. And, of course, Dave um, Walters has been wanting to do this. And so last week, him and I, we just said, well, why don't we just go ahead and make it this week. And so Brother Dave is going to come. Um, um, do we have, are these the handouts to, to um, uh, number nine? Maybe you, uh, Brother Rick and, and Brother Sean, would you mind passing some of those out so that we can get those into the people's hands? And... Um, I want to um, go ahead and, and bring Dave up here. You go ahead and use the microphone, and he's going to go ahead and start with chart number, um, or I should say he's going to teach on chart number one of lesson number nine tonight, okay? Praise God. Why don't you welcome Brother Dave? Isn't this good to have him teaching tonight? Praise the Lord. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. I know. Praise the Lord. Let's just, pray. Let's just open... Uh, say, say a word of prayer for the Bible study. Lord God, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God, Lord, for this Bible study. I thank you for your word, Lord God. I thank you for the church. I thank you for every single one of my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord God. Um, just open up our spiritual eyes, Lord God, and our heart, Lord God, and help us to see and help us to receive your word. And... Um, Applied to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, we got that. <laughs> I was afraid of that. I can't see that from here. But anyways, I hope you guys don't mind if I walk around. Okay. Anyways, uh, this is a new covenant that starts out, um, welcome to the kingdom. It's a new um this being a new covenant way of life, and it is a new way of life, a totally new new way of life, you know, and uh, uh, God gives gives us, when we walk in it, we, we receive privileges, but we also see, receive uh, responsibilities and stuff. It's been, it, you know, 
I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit back in 1989, and I've been, um, and I'm still um, receiving all kinds of new, new stuff that um, it just really is awesome. And God gives us different things to, to uh, walk in this life. He gives us spiritual armor. It's provided by him. And uh, he gives us spiritual fruits as we live for him. He gives us spiritual gifts as we live for him. The old, the old priesthood is replaced with um, apo- the fivefold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers to equip saints and to serve. Uh, the sacrificial system now consists of continual offering of praise and worship. Um, Jesus carefully, carefully explained how to enter and also taught us about the privileges and responsibilities after you enter. Entries, the entry to the new kingdom is made um, through the door of Jesus himself says in John 10, 7 through 9, Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. (coughs) By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and will find pasture. The new life is not without its conflicts. Even though Jesus offers numerous fantastic privileges, our earth suit creates struggles between the spirit and the, and the flesh world. The, um, the flesh is enmity with God. It can't. It doesn't just don't get along. It can't. You know, it's... it's uh, it says in Romans, or uh, let's go to James chapter 4, verse 4. It says, ye adulteresses and adulter- or adulter- adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, is, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And that's not, you know, um, that adulterer, that type of adulterer is not type of talking about cheating on your wife or husband. It is talking about cheating on God. And that's what, you know, this is, I look at it back in, back in the Old Testament when God created the garden and everything, put Adam and Eve on the garden, in the garden, and he could, you could do anything in that garden. I mean, they had, that was the gar- most beautiful place that there was, and God says, just do whatever you want. Do wh- You could eat of any, absolutely any fruit of any tree in that garden, but just one thing. And ever since, you know, we decided to uh, do that, and once we decided to do that, we became, this is the way I, we cheated on God. And at Romans 8, Seven says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It can be. Righteousness, peace, and joy are inner qualities that spring forth from the Spirit. The kingdom is God reigning in the recreated Spirit of God believers once you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God except except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Entrance into his kingdom requires a new birth. The natural eye cannot see the realm or this realm which much less or much less 
enter into. It's weird to us. I mean, it, it, it has been to me. I lived, you know, in that world for quite a few years. And the things that God does in my life in the spiritual, in the spirit is sometimes weird to me. No, it's not sometimes. It's a lot. I'm starting to get used to it now, you know. And it's way cool, I should say. Not weird, it's cool. The spirit and the way he does things. So unique is the kingdom, is kingdom living that it turns ordinary ideas upside down. The tangible, visible, meat and drink are completely ex excluded. It's, it's uh, weird. Awkwardly, Nicodemus fumbled for words to express how he yearned to know more about God. Um, Jesus, or er, Nicodemus come up to him, and he's asked, you know, asking Jesus about this stuff at night time. You know, when nobody could see, nobody else could see. I wonder how many people, you know, I have people come up to me all the time, and I, and God gives me this later. He's been giving me this more and more and more and more later after I, I somebody comes up to me awkwardly, a lot of awkwardly, and a lot of belligerently, you know, a lot of, I get a lot of real, whoa, you know, today. I work with people. I'm surrounded by people that uh, once they find out that I'm a Christian, and sometimes they don't have, I think sometimes they just feel it. When I walk in the door, they just can feel it. I, I've walked into places, and I've been attacked. Some, you know, either uh, one way or another, very meanly or very, I'm attracted, uh, an attractant to people. And I think a lot of times people come up to me and they ask or they be get belligerent with the, with God or the things of God and they try to poke. I, a lot, and God says, you know, a lot of times maybe they're just uh, wanting to know more about God, Dave, you know. So don't t attack them back, you know, in a in a bad way. Uh, Matthew eighteen three says, and and said, verily I say unto you, except a man be converted and be as a little child, or be as little children, ye shall ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Here's another important qualification for entering in the kingdom. Which traits, which traits of a child should should we be? Is he talking about here? You know, is it is it? You know, because I know some spoiled little brats. You know, bless their hearts. You know, who taught them to be spoiled? But I did. I couldn't. I had a hard time spanking my boys. <laughs> I'd I'd rather just give them the candy. But uh, <laughs> um. They used to have that show, uh, and I, I witnessed it for myself. I like to go to the swimming pool and watch the little, the new little itsy bitsies go out there and swim. And that's just precious as precious can be. You know, and then they get up to two years old, and they're not so precious. And then they get up to three years old, and they start asking, why? 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 You know, why is this? Why is this go on? Why is that go on? And it just cracks me up because you don't have time that you're trying to do this and stuff. I think that's, you know, they're teachable. They want to know what's going on. A lot of times, you know, you see somebody get hired at a job that is should take years of maybe college or qualifications, and somebody will hire somebody that doesn't know anything. Well, why did you? Why'd you hire that guy? He doesn't know anything. And that's exactly why they hired him. He's teachable. Uh, they're intimate. Or they imitate the, the truly g great attributes they trust. They do not worry about meals or clothing. They simply trust. They're humble. They're transparent. 
they're open, honest, and pure. They're forgiving. Um, and I think that's, that's what, I don't think I know that's what God wants us to be towards him. You know, I mean, he's going to protect us. God will protect us if we trust in him, you know. Imitate or uh, the awesome benefits of the co of this covenant stagger the imagination. Often, God God's family members fail to fail to tap into the unlimited resources available to them. Uh, so accustomed are we to constant battling with Satan's lordship that. Or we cannot, we, we, uh, so many times we cannot s conceive the magnitude of heaven's blessings. You know, I think if we, if myself, and sometimes I get, I'm getting better. You know, I wish that I could say, oh, yeah, I'm the top of the pinnacle, but I am not. And I'm, but I'm learning, you know, the more I realize who I am in Christ and who Christ is in me, whoa. You know, it just uh, it, it talks about it in the in the New Testament, and I've seen it too. You know, and I've heard about it. You know, I mean, I've actually seen it with my own two eyes. You know what God's done to me, and what God's done to other people when I trust in Him. You know, and and do the trust deal, live for Him like He wants us to. Um, you know, I think another is Satan is constantly battering us. He's out there, and he's he may be in our you know I mean the world and his system is it could be in our houses, it could be in our cars, it could be what we listen to, it could be where we go, uh, how we talk, you know, and on and on. Uh, he doesn't want us to know who we are because if once if once we know who we are <coughs> he's gone Johnson he don't have a chance uh, okay let's begin ex this exciting lesson by establish establishing Christ's covenant commitment he offers some fa fantastic promises. He, he offers us remissions of sin. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. That's Acts 2.38. Once Christ's blood legally redeems us, our sins are not merely covered or rolled ahead like they were in the Old Testament through animal sacrifice. They are dismissed. They're removed. They're cleansed. God, I mean, they're out. We be, we became son. We become sons of God with full privileges and authority in our authority to use the family name, and we should use that name. What is that name? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, but as many as receive Him, to them He gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe. In his name. Righteousness. Like it's like a robe that God puts on us. It's not our righteousness. It's his righteousness. Enabling us to enter into his. Into the father's presence. And stand before the throne of God. Completely. Completely cleansed. You know we don't even have to. We don't even have to. Um, you know God says it's okay we can also go right straight to satan and his works and say you know what i've been cleansed you know um he that he that or eternal life he that heareth my word and believeth on him that that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death to life this new birth of the spirit results in a new creation 
Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All or old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I'm sure I'm still trying to get that. I mean, you know, that's a concept that just is cool. Discovering our rights and privileges is the very first step towards claiming them. Uh, and we must be underst we must understand the lordship of Christ. What does lordship mean? This means you don't do it, nothing without Jesus. You know you you don't you don't go to the store. You don't go to work. You don't wake up. You don't go to bed. You don't do nothing without God being. I mean, He's got to be the center of your life. Therefore, take no thought, saying what. What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with wherewithal shall we be cleansed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of them, or all of these things. These are the wonderful covenant promises. Rev remission of sins. He has cleansed us, cleansed our slates of past wrongs. Sons of God, he has adopted us into his family with full privileges and, uh, and authority to use the family name. Righteousness, eternal life, new creation, and lordship of Christ. Here's the responsibilities now. we got some responsibilities of this. And let's examine our conditions of the covenant relationship. The first requirement is that we love God. God and obey his laws. Simple. That's what I used to tell Bobby. When he was growing up, I said, just obey me. Just do what I want you to do, and you got it everything. Well, he's kind of like me and everybody else. He's <laughs> not perfect in that. Uh, John 14, 23 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, if a, man, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Um, we're, ob we're to obey him. Obey him. Uh, first, first Samuel it talks about uh, Saul. Uh, let's see, where's it? Going and doing some things that that God asked him to do, but he only partially did them, you know. And and he had an excuse that he was going to use these animals that God told him to kill for sacrifices. That sounds like pretty good, you know. And uh, and the, and uh, Samuel told him, "Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than uh, hearken than the fat of rams. In every aspect of life, action, conduct, thoughts, future plans, ambitions, we must seek." For and then accept God's will. Matthew seven twenty one says, "Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven." Uh, we're to submit to human authority. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's a doozy right there. I mean, myself, I was a lawbreaker big time, and I still am, you know that? I still am. I have problems with that. I come down the street here, and it says go go 30 miles an hour. Guess what I do? 35. You know, and, and it talks, God says in his word, you know. Uh, he talks to me about that kind of stuff. It's like, so now I'm a grandpa driver in a way, but... <laughs> <laughs> I drive like an old man, but I, not all the time. Ain't got my Mustang anymore. 
<laughs> uh, obey law, laws, the government's laws. We were our family, the children to obey their parents, husbands to obey her wa his wife, wife to obey the husband, uh, citizens. Oh, that's the no, local and national leaders, the church. Church members are subject to church leaders. Sometimes we don't like that. But I'll tell you what, it's worth it. You know, I, I lose all of that. Sometimes I've actually walked out of here and uh, my pastor made me mad. And God tapped me on the shoulder after I got out of there. And I was grateful my pastor. My pastor was right. My, pa that my pastor is a man of God. All the, you know, God puts leaderships in the church for a reason. Another responsibility is to continue our spiritual development. Many enter into the covenant but fail to develop. From, from the believe stage, we must continue doing the word. Many enter into the covenant but fall fail to develop from the believer stage. We must continue doing the word. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know that the truth and the truth shall make you free. It says in the Bible, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and ye shall be saved. And that's a lot of people. Church, that's it. That's all they want. You know, and that's a sad, sad deal because to believe, it, you got to go on. Then said Jesus to those Joes, oh, I have to, sorry about that. Man is a three-part thing, spirit, soul, mind, will, and emotions. Or spirit, soul, mind, or mind, will, I don't know, the body, and the body. Body, soul, and spirit. <laughs> that's, my, that's my freaking. Uh, I don't know what that is. I can't see you guys. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, something that I really impresses me, and God really impresses this on my heart. Um, you know, I want to be a tough guy. I've always wanted to be a tough guy, you know, big muscles and everything else like that. And uh, God is impressed. Somebody that's in the church that's living for God, that's got big muscles, um, you know, and they're physically fit in a whole, just really impresses me. That is something that, uh, I don't know what the word is to say, but um, so many people get, the devil, I think, believe, I believe the devil will use like uh, building your muscles to people get into that, and they then they forget about the rest of their the rest of their life. Anyways, uh, it was carry your daily cross it must be endured must be endured if we will be Jesus's disciples continue Jesus's mission our responsibility is to go into all the worth all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature um, this is not a request but a command if we if we are not striving in some way to accompli accomplish this commission, we are not fulfilling our covenant responsibilities. Prepare for future positions in the coming millennium kingdom. Um, it says in Revelation 26, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him in for 
or a thousand years. Learn to rule and reign. Learning to rule and reign in him begins, or with him begins right now. But do not stop at the door of the kingdom. Multitudes are piously sitting with folded hands, waiting for the coming of the Lord. Yet there is so much to learn, so many promises to claim, so many gifts to be received, so many uh, promises to claim, or so many millions in our world who have never heard the good news. Why not stop? Why not step inside the invisible realm of the kingdom and discover more of its possibilities? Uh, get back there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's give Dave a, 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 a good, reassuring, very good. Yeah, make sure you get that microphone off. That's what we've got to do. No, it's that's that's fine. That's fine. Um, very good, very good. Um, as you can see, this is this these lessons can take up a lot of time. They really can. But I appreciate that. You know, when you talk about the privileges and the responsibilities, these are things that you and I we must you know adhere to our own life. And so, welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the kingdom. Let's. Um, let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, first of all, does anybody have any questions about what Dave taught tonight? Any, anybody have any questions about the, about the um, welcome to the kingdom, privileges versus responsibilities? Sister Carnahan? I don't either. Um, so uh, did you want him to answer that or what? Your question is what now? What, what's, what specifically do you? Okay. We can go straight to Satan. Did that help you? Okay. Let's um, go to chart number, um, I guess chart number two here, if we can do that. Um, I have talked uh, in this class uh, quite a bit. I've talked about the fact that there are scriptures or groups of scriptures that I think we need to consider getting familiar with. And, of course, I've told you about the fifth, sixth, and seven chapters of the Gospel of Matthew. I think these are just packed full of all kinds of things. Um, one of the, uh, the por uh, what we'll find in this portion of Scripture, of course, is the, um, uh, the attitudes or the beatitudes that need to be. And, of course, we see them in, in particular here that Jesus began to teach that, that these are the attitudes that you and I want to have. But here's something that I want you to see. The Scripture says in, um, um, and, and again, I, I'm not going to go into these beatitudes right now, but the Scripture says in verse number 13, this is where I want to take it, 5 and 13 in Matthew. The scripture says there, it says, ye are the salt of the earth, praise God. But if the salt have lost its savor, it says, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. And then he said in verse number 14, if you want to get that up there, he said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. It says, do men um, light a candle and put it under a bushel? but on a, on a um, candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in, 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 in the house. And then verse number 16 kind of culminates when it says, let your light so shine before men. And I, I think this is so very important. And when it comes to this, this particular chart here from, from darkness to light, I believe this is one of the things that, 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 that God has called us to become. 
is become literally the light of the world, you know. And, and obviously, we can sit here and we can, we can discuss about all of the darknesses that, that, that there are and, and so on and so forth. But, but we understand that when, when the truth comes into our light and we begin to live the truth, praise God, we begin to become a light. And, th and th this is what the world needs to see, in my opinion. Now, on the chart there, you see two different things here. You see the old way, which is, you know, this is how, how we, we, we manage. This is how we, we, we approached life, you know. You know, if somebody did something wrong to us, we did something wrong to them. You know, I mean, there was just basically, um, you know, these simple things that we, we took on. But what God is asking us to do, he's, he's asking us to present a new way in our life. And, and, and that's where on the other side of it, you know, you talk about things like forgiveness and, 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 uh, and allowing our thoughts to become pure and, and pardon and loving our enemies and, and, and so on and so forth down the line here. You know, these are the things that are the ongoing um, uh, regiments that we've got to begin to institute in our own lives, is that we've got to begin to um, allow God to, to, to have that access to us all the time. You know, how am I doing? You know, how do, uh, how do, how do I, uh, what's my attitude towards certain things? You ever ask the Lord that, those kind of questions? I do too, you know. How am I doing? You know, what's, what's, uh, 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 what, what, what's really going on deep inside of my heart? And so I believe that the Lord can help us to do that. You know, I think it was David that penned the, the phrase, he said, search me. You know, help me to understand what's, what's really inside there. And, and this is one of the things that I believe is, is an important revolution, revelation that God has to give us. What's really inside of my heart? And boy, once we find out there's things in there that don't belong there, you know, like the old way, you know, what's the approach that we need to have? Okay, God, let's get rid of that. Let's replace it with something that's better. Okay, and that's what I feel like the kingdom of God needs to become more of. Sometimes we, we get caught up in the idea of what I can't do or what, where I can't go and so on and so forth. I think sometimes we need to realize what we can do. You know, if we're a brand new creature in Christ Jesus, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, that, that, that takes precedent over everything and anything. Can somebody say amen to that? Yeah. And so... We must understand that, that, that that's what God is constantly doing is he's moving us from that darkness to that light. And that's what's important. And that's the progress that I think that we need to, to maintain. Sometimes we, we can get discouraged by looking at what other people are doing or what, what other th or things are happening in other people's lives. But I think sometimes we just have to, to realize that, that, that God is working on us. He's working on us right now, and he wants to move us into a place where not only we can become productive for his kingdom, but that our light is going to begin to shine very, very, very brightly. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. That's a privilege. You know, we talk about the, you know, the, the golden rule or the fruit test, you know, on this page here, you know. I mean, these are things that you and I must be constantly um, conscious of, and that's why a good familiarity of the fifth, sixth, and seventh chapters of the Gospel of Matthew, will give us a good will will give us good indicators. You know how are we doing? How do we line up with that? You know how are we doing with that? And another thing that we must remember before we move on to another page here is the fact that laws and rules they're necessary. See, a lot of times we we're living in a world where we want to do away from the things that that God actually puts in our lives that actually holds us and keeps us planted you know, on that solid, on the solid ground. And, and Brother Dave mentioned the fact. Let me show you something in the Scripture here. He mentioned this before, and I just want to kind of um, um, uh, reiterate this. Look at Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. And let me show you something here. Romans chapter number 8, I think I've made reference to this, is, is basically life in the Spirit. And, and, and this is what God offers us. He offers us a better way, which is life in the Spirit, okay? But listen to what the Word of God says. The Scripture says, it says, and starting in verse number 5, I'm in 8 and 5, Romans 8 and 5, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now, who can tell me what are some of the things of the Spirit? What are we talking about when we talk about coming, going after the things of the Spirit? What are we talking about? Anybody over here in the cheap seats? 
Can you think of anything? When we talk about going after the spiritual things, what are we talking about? Joy and peace, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that, that the kingdom of God is not eat and meat, eating and drinking, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Good answer. How about somebody else? Loving your neighbor, yeah. That's, that's part of the kingdom of God, isn't it? Yeah. How about somebody else? Anyone else? Okay, how about over here? What are we talking about? When we talk about we, we need to be getting more of the Spirit of God into our lives, what are we talking about here? What's that? Discipline? Sure, I think that's part of it. Yeah, it's good. Any of you guys got any ideas over here? Sure, being more holy, that's, that's part of it, yeah. Anyone else? Brother. Hungering thirst and thirsting after the things of God. Yeah, yeah. These are all good answers. I mean, you guys are you're hitting the, you're hitting the nail on the head. This is what it is. But what is the, the one of the major things that that stands in conflict of that? See, we like to blame the devil, don't we? And of course, the devil is you know he's 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 not somebody that's without fault. But I'm just saying, a lot of times we we want to blame him for everything when a lot of our problems have to stem from the flesh, our own wrong desires. And so what I'm trying to emphasize here is the, the, uh, the necessity to move from that darkness to the light, to begin to think differently, to begin to let God, you know, help us to process things in life a lot better, you know. And I believe he can. But here's something we must, we must realize. The Scripture says in verse number, number 6, it says, for to be carnally minded is death. It isn't going to do you and I any good. It says, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, this is what I, where I was headed here. That's what we got to start doing, in my opinion. You know, a lot of times we want to take on the task. We want to get something accomplished. Well, in my opinion, I think we need to get, we need to get the horse before the cart, if I can put it that way. And that is to begin to think spiritually. Think the way God thinks, you know. Let those thoughts, you know, um, uh, let this mind that was in Christ be in us, you know. And this is where I think we can begin to um, uh, establish some, some, some traction, if I can put it that way. We can begin to think the way God wants us to think. And what we must understand, and, 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 and again, what we, what we got to recognize is the fact that the carnal mind thinks differently. That's what we're up against. And this is what we're going to have to really, really begin to pay attention on. And this is what God will help us with. Because watch what it says here. The Scripture says, because the carnal mind, it says, is enmity. Now, he made reference to this. And what that is, is it's directly opposed to God. That's what it is. Your and my thinking in the flesh is in opposition to God. And that's why we struggle with it. Now do you understand why we got to have some rules and regulations in our life to keep that thought pattern at bay? You see, that's why being obedient to God isn't some dull and, 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 and drastic task. What it is is it's keeping that carnal mind at bay. And this is what God calls us to do, is to become obedient. You know, Jesus emphasized this to his own disciples. He said, if you love me, he says, you'll keep my commandments. You know, and so this is what you and I must begin to consider because the Bible says that the carnal mind is enmity with God. It says, for it, is, it is, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see, it's not going to work that way. But it says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But then it goes on to say in verse number 9, it says, but if ye are not, it says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It says, if so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth or dwell in you. And so this is what we this this is what makes a huge difference. This is the light that, in my opinion, needs to begin to shine, is the shining of God's Spirit in our lives. And we don't do that by becoming perfect in the flesh. We do that by uh, 
by beginning to shut the flesh down. By begin, and I, I feel like what we need to do is we need to begin to shut it down in that thinking area, you know. And that's why this page, I think, can, can, can be um, very profitable to us because we see in complete direct opposition there, you know, the old way. Like, for instance, the old way was greed. You know, what's in it for me, you know? And, and, and the new way is to give, to become generous, you know, that type of thing. And so this is what God has got for us, and that's what, how you can tell, in my opinion, that you're beginning to pass from that darkness to the light. Amen. Does anybody want to want to make a comment about maybe something that you've struggled with in the flesh and by the Spirit of God, He helped you to overcome that? Has anybody got, got, got a, a, a testimony there that they want to they share tonight? Yeah, I'm not going to stare at you, but I'm just going to give you the opportunity. Maybe it was something that you, that you really struggled with, and, and uh, uh, just be, go ahead and stand up, Marvin. I'm sorry, folks, but I can't. I can't hear very well. And Oops. Oops, that isn't going to that isn't going to work. Well, I guess I can't shut it off. Well, I can. I'll be right back. I'm sorry, but I want to hear him. I'm coming back. Can we hear a little bit better now in here? Can you hear now? Yeah. You need to do that. Go ahead, Marvin. Give us, give us your, your rendition. I see a lot of, some of you want to smile like I am, and I think it's because he's hitting, a, he's hitting a nail on the head here, isn't he? He's hitting a nerve, isn't he? Amen. And you, what you're saying is God has helped you with that. Yeah, I think that's cool. Somebody else. Come on, we, we've only got just a few minutes here, but let's just take a, go ahead. Something God has helped you with. Ah. Awesome. That's pretty cool, don't you think? Worry and anxiety. Anybody else ever have problems like that? <laughs> sure we do. My goodness. This is, this, is, this is where the rubber meets the road, isn't it? Somebody else. This is neat. I like this. Go ahead. No, not you, Larry. We're the one behind you. You can be next. You can be next. <laughs>
That's awesome. Be that example, right? That's what we do. That's what we do. You know, I think she's bringing up an excellent point here, and I think Marvin did too, I think, and, uh, and, and Larry, you're, you're next. But God, I believe what God, and, and this is something I hope that we can, we can grasp from tonight's uh, Bible study. I believe God will start making us aware of it. How many besides myself, when you first came to the Lord, maybe there were a lot of things in your life you didn't even know they were wrong? Can anybody identify with that? That, I think this is, this is really what God does, is he begins to help us to become aware of some of the things and even aware of the contrast. In my opinion, the reason why some people don't change, it's not the only reason, but one of them, is because they don't know there's something different. They don't know there's another way to do it. And this is where I think God's consciousness or his spirit can begin to make us aware. Go ahead, brother. Now, your wife thinks you're still perfect, though, right? Is that, that's what the deal is? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, um, it's 20 after. We've got time for one more. Does somebody else want to want to want to share something that God you know in the light? And go ahead, Carla. Go ahead. That's awesome. Uh, these are good. You know, to just kind of wrap this up right now, are you beginning to see the obvious difference between the darkness and the light? Well, come on. Give yourself some credit here. Well, I give God all the credit, but the bottom line is that's God. That's how he begins to work. You know, the Scripture says that one of the tools that the devil uses is blindness, and people are blinded to the fact well, thank God that we're not blinded anymore, that we know that there's a different way to do this, that we can go from the darkness to the light, that God can keep making those improvements, praise God, and we can keep getting stronger and stronger in his kingdom, praise God, and his spirit can have, can have that preeminence in Jesus' name. Let's stand tonight. God bless you tonight. Appreciate Dave bringing us um, the chart uh, tonight, the chart number one, I know this has been a little bit scattered, but why don't we pray and let's ask God to help us to battle against the darkness. What do you say? Come on, let's keep up the good fight of faith and let's believe that God is helping us to do that in Jesus' name. Why don't you go ahead and put it in your words right now. Just go ahead and, and thank the Lord and, and, and ask him to help you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the, in the, in the name of Jesus here tonight, Lord God, I appreciate these testimonies. I appreciate these these 
uh, folks that have stood up and just said, listen, this is an area of my life that, I'm, that God has dealt with, and I thank God for that testimony. In fact, the Scripture says that we overcome by the word of our testimony. And so, Lord God, touch these, touch everyone here tonight, Lord God. Help us never to be the same again. Help us to continue to fight that good fight of faith. And, Lord Jesus, help us to do what you want us, what you want us to do every day, Lord God, to keep up that front in the name of Jesus. And I give you the praise and I give you the glory in Jesus' name. What do you say we thank the Lord together? Yes, he's a wonderful God, isn't he? He's a wonderful God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Don't forget on Sunday.